Well, we're still at Santa Cruz. Because <laughs> it was so much fun riding the train. Yes. But we stayed at the beach because, you know, you're in Santa yeah, Cruz, course. you know, and it's like that far away from the railroad. Mm -hmm. So we stayed right there in Santa Cruz. Right. Originally, our plan was to ride the standard gauge train up to the narrow gauge train, but yeah. it's so early in the year, they're not running it yet. So it wasn't early in the year. It, was, it wasn't, well, but yeah, it's another argue story. With them, but for them, it was too early. You know, anything before 4th of July, by their standards, I guess, is early in the year. Anyway. What do they think it is, Wyoming? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> so they weren't they weren't running the standard gauge just uh, yet, so right. we, we missed that. But we did go to the pier, the boardwalk, and the pier, and hang out and do rides and play some games and just have a grand old time. Exactly. The neat thing about the Santa Cruz Pier, or boardwalk, there's one of each there, um, is that it's really completely intact. It's one of those great turn of the century, 1900 era amusement parks. Ah. But unlike most of them, Coney Island and so on, this thing is almost completely the way it was built. It's there. One major structure is burned down, everything else is still there. That's amazing. It's just incredible. So check this out, the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Well, we're still here in Santa Cruz riding the Roaring Camp and Big Trees Railroad. Check narrow out those gauge. locos, wow. Is that neat? They've got four operating narrow gauge here. Uh, the big three truck Shay number seven. But you know, the one I really want to ride is the one spot, the little two truck Shay. I know, that wasn't operating that day. No, uh, but normally they've got four narrow gauge trains running and then the big standard gauge that takes you down to the beach. Oh, wow. Santa Cruz is really well known for its boardwalk. Oh, look at that. It's so neat. It's really an old, old amusement park, and it's always been connected by rail to the Bay Area, and the standard gauge train still takes people between the boardwalk and, in this case, Roaring Camp. It doesn't go up to the Bay Area anymore, but this way you can connect between the narrow gauge trains and the beach. I can't believe they take these huge trains up these narrow oh, little look, yeah. streets. It's like, how do they get through there without killing people? It's no, completely just, beyond me. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, how fun. But very oh, soon wow, it gets up that. into the forest, into the redwood trees. Here's the train arriving Roaring Camp. And from here you ride the little plantation train up to the narrow gauge station. It was originally called the South Pacific Coast Railroad, was built as a narrow gauge, and as you can see from the map, it connected San Jose and the rail network to the beach at Santa Cruz. Wow, check that out. That is beautiful. Look at that trestle. It was built as a three-foot gauge railroad and then for a brief period ran dual gauge as it was being standard gauged. It is, of course, today strictly standard gauge. All the railroads of that era had uh, passenger service as a major source of revenue, but this railroad in particular taking people from the Bay Area down to the beach. Not a lot of people driving around the turn of the century. But even after cars became popular, the railroad was still just the popular way to get down to the beach. Clearly, they were moving a lot of people. Do you recognize this bridge? Isn't that from the movie The Lost Boys? Yeah, it plays quite a prominent role in that. What a creepy, sure creepy oh, movie. No Good grief. Yes. Kiefer Sutherland. The current boardwalk was built in 1907, replaced an earlier boardwalk that had burned down, and uh, it's still pretty much intact. Most of these are the original buildings from 1907. Check out this cool old postcard. The building to the right is the swimming pavilion, the one right in the middle, the casino, and to the far left, the hotel, which actually burned down and is no longer there. But surprisingly, all of these buildings are still there. The whole boardwalk is principally intact. Yeah. This is the old original boardwalk that burned down. 
The second boardwalk was largely based on this structure, uh-huh. Salt Air, on, on the Great Salt <laughs> the Lake. The Great Salt Lake. We're kind of familiar with that yes, place. Yes, we are. This here reminds me of the tabernacle here in Salt Lake City. You know, they used the same plans. They just modernized them to steel structure. Since they had the plans, why not repurpose them? But the whole salt air concept was largely based on Coney Island in New York City. And now Coney Island was not an amusement park. A lot of people don't understand that. It was a whole bunch of amusement parks. And this one, Luna Park, is the one that they were principally copying for Salt Air because it had this strange international flavor of architecture. Notice the Japanese restaurant to the right and the Moorish architecture, which is what they were really copying, to the left. Also, they seem to have elephant rides right there on the boardwalk. Can you imagine? But you can see here, it looks a lot like the Moorish architecture from Luna Park. It sure was popular. Their tagline was even the Coney Island of the West. (laughs) This is kind of interesting. This was my first ever railroad video, if you will, 16 millimeter. I made this in 1983. And I'm gonna post it on a Wednesday, one of these first days. But it's about the railroad that used to go out to the Salt Air Resort on the Mm, Great Salt Lake. But the pavilion here at Santa Cruz, you you can see all of the influence of Salt Air right there. Exactly. And they stole the tagline, the Coney Island of the West. (laughs) More west. (laughs) Yeah, so just a little further west. The building has survived the ravages of weather and fire uh, and unlike salt air it has managed to survive of course over the decades it has evolved quite a bit changing with the times several of the really classic rides have survived too oh my gosh this is called the giant dipper oh that was their really famous roller coaster i guess and it's still there it's on the national register of historic places And this is their original roller coaster that burned down called the Scenic Railway. And this is the swimming pavilion. Oh my goodness. Doesn't it seem odd that they would put a giant swimming pool at the beach? Well, the ocean can be cold. (laughs) Especially in Santa Cruz. (laughs) That's right. The heated pool was much more popular than the ice cold water of the surf. What is it about swimming pools that brings out the goofball in I people? I <laughs> don't know. I think Spike Jones sang about that one. And over the years, they had several different train rides right there on the pier. Do you recognize the little locomotive? It's a little Cagney, isn't it? It is a Cagney. I think all of these trains out on the pier were Cagneys, but they always featured some sort of little miniature railroad there on the boardwalk. A couple of weeks ago, we visited Wasatch Railroad contractors. They rebuild Cagneys. I love them. They're even offering (laughs) a reproduction Cagney now. So if you want one, you can just buy one from them. Live music was, of course, always a big feature. But during the big band era, they converted the casino into this place, the Coconut Grove. Oh, fun. Isn't that neat? Love very, big band. very, very popular night spot there in oh, the Bay Area yeah. during the big band era. Right after the boardwalk was finished, they built a gigantic municipal pier. Oh, wow, look at Just that. Just a fun place to go. Uh, freight ships and so on could tie up there, but I think it was mostly just for people to go out and have fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> During Prohibition, they say that it was used for rum running. Oh my! And you know, today it's still used for rum running. <laughs> I guess, among other things. <laughs> yeah, oh, now it's in human containers. These oh, yes. are all restaurants and bars and so on out on the pier. Nice. Of course, none of this would be here at all if it weren't for the fact that it's a beautiful, beautiful beach. Oh, it is. Right on Monterey Bay. Exactly. Just uh, some of the most beautiful places Mm -hmm. on the planet. Oh, look at that. And if you don't mind ice water, there's even some really good surfing here. I have my eye on that lighthouse over there. Isn't that neat? I love lighthouses. 
And of course, the boardwalk is just one giant crazy carnival. Always fun. Always fun to go to the beach and the boardwalk. But in this case, having the old original buildings here just really adds a lot of fun and character to it. It sure does. You can see they sort of extended the back of the swimming pavilion and also turned it into a miniature golf. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I guess people didn't really want to go swimming anymore, and in the 1960s it became a miniature golf. The giant dipper is still here and still causing people to throw uh, up on a regular exactly. basis, so that's really fun. And this is their incredible 1911 Luff merry-go-round. You know the difference between a merry-go-round and a carousel. Yeah, they, the merry-go-round has horses and yeah. the carousel has other animals. That's right. They have three band organs attached to the merry-go-round. This is a Wurlitzer. Two of them are Wurlitzers and don't actually go with this merry-go-round. Oh. But they've been added to it and all three are perfectly restored and play on MIDI and cycle between the three different instruments. Oh, cool. And this is the original Luf band organ, nice. which is all restored and playing perfectly. How beautiful oh. is that? Oh my! Ah! <laughs> This thing is called a laughing sow. Where have this, I seen that before? Well, they had one at Lagoon. Oh, that's right. This one is actually from Playland in San Francisco. <laughs> but it's, you know, it's a fun place. It's an amusement it park. It is. Look with at that. All the games. To, do those bears look they familiar? They sure do. <laughs> <laughs> we had a fun experience with the giant bears out oh, at the I Lagoon keep Amusement keep having Park. having experiences with them, too. One of the lower areas in the old casino is now an arcade, and they've got arcades. some really <laughs> neat old, old games in here that are really fun. This is kind of a steampunk fortune teller oh, with a serious migraine headache going on. You know, if there really was such a thing as a time machine, I think we would be traveling back to the old 1927 Salt Air. Absolutely. Just it's so amazing. And this is close to that. This is about as close as you're ever going to get to time traveling back mm -hmm. to Coney Island in, oh, yes. in those days or back to Salt Air before it burned down. The fact that this particular boardwalk is also connected by rail to a narrow gauge steam railroad. Oh, that makes it even better. That makes it way better. And the scenery around here with the Pacific Ocean and the redwood trees, oh, look at just unbelievably fun place to visit. In other words, we got to get right back we there. We certainly do. We missed riding the standard gauge. We did. And we got to go ride that thing. Right. And then that's an excuse to ride the narrow gauge and mm -hmm. see all four steam engines running, which we also missed. We'll leave the rides up to the young people. Yeah, that would just make me throw up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't throw up riding on a railroad, no. so much better for us. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to have to come back and ride the standard gauge. Well, yeah, we are, because we didn't get a chance to ride that one. And the, the grade just looks amazing. It does. First, it goes up somebody's driveway. It's a little bit narrow going right. out of town. And, yeah. and then it gets out into the redwood trees. And it's like, good grief, this yeah. is just beautiful. Right. And no train riding yeah. on it yet. <laughs> yet. So we're going to come back, and we're going to ride the darn train, because that's just amazing. Yes, it is. Well, if you, if you haven't been over to the channel, and especially if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do get over to the channel and do subscribe, because it's cool. Right. And anybody that subscribes is therefore cool. And you can get to the channel and you can become a subscriber by clicking on the blue button. Ready for the blue button? Yeah. Zoink! See the blue button that's right in here somewhere? It says subscribe, takes you to the channel, makes you a subscriber if you're not a subscriber. Mm -hmm. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will be back here again in one week with some more significant screwing around. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.